Hello and welcome to this next video in the series of Orca tutorials. Uh, this one we're going to be looking at how to calculate vibrational frequencies using the Orca system. Previously, we've looked at geometry optimizations and how to set up the program on a Windows 11 Pro environment. So uh, if you've followed along with the geometry optimization, you'll have had this h2o.imp input file. So we're going to use that as a basis. We're going to do the vibrational frequencies for water because they're really well known. So it's pretty easy to benchmark against the literature. So uh, if we look here, we had these two lines. The first line, uh, exclamation marks are one of the ways to indicate in ORCA that this is a line that should be read as a input parameter. So we had RHF, which was a, a hartree fock calculation. Then we had optimization, which was the geometry optimization. And then this def 2 svp was just one of the simple uh, basis sets in the program. Because we just really wanted to get going. We wanted to show how a geometry optimization might work. Then uh, after that, we had the normal print, print basis, uh, print MOs. So we had that because we wanted to visualize our molecular orbitals. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that because in this one, we're looking for the frequencies. You could keep that there, but it tends to make the files a little bit larger, has a little bit more disk space. So if it's not necessary, as it's not really necessary here, I'm going to remove it. But we could have kept it there. Then I'm going to save the file as something different. So I just call it H2O uh, freak because that's for frequencies. So I'll save that. Um, okay. So uh, in the manual, if we go there, we can see like a bunch of different things. So here's the Orca manual, really nice document. Um, so we'll go to under eight running typical calculations. That's where they describe a lot of the inputs. Um, and if we go down to 8.4, which is vibrational frequencies, then um, it has a bunch of information here on how to run these calculations and some of the things that you might run into as problems. So here, uh, I'll let you read that if you want um, in your own time. It's really useful. The manual, in fact, is full of lots of useful information, both theoretical and also just generally on how to run the calculations. So uh, I'm going to go back to our old, good old friend, the Orca input library, and look under, um, where was it? Uh, vibrational frequencies and thermochemistry. So we're mostly looking for vibrational frequencies. There's numerical frequency calculations, but since we're doing an optimization as well, we can actually couple our optimization with an analytical frequency uh, calculation, which um, is probably recommended for most jobs if it's available. So uh, here I'm going to use the frequency and I'm going to use this RIJ COSX. Um, because now it's the recommended uh, for the Hessian calculation in ORCA 5.0. I don't think it was recommended before, but now it is. So I'm going to put it in here after opt. I'm just going to paste in that uh, RIJ COXX with the frequency, and I'm going to save that. Um, then, of course, the next thing would be to run this and just have a look. So I'm going to open up my terminal and then I've got to go to my Orca run directory, which is where I've saved that. So that's on my desktop um, in my Orca run directory. So I go there, then I check if the contents are correct. Yeah, I can see there h2o underscore freak dot INP. So that's what I want to run. So I go Orca, then h2o uh, freak. Then I want to send that to a new file um, dot out. Oh, I then hit enter and let that run. It should run pretty quickly. It's just a hard refoc, and then it's just um, a pretty simple basis set. So there we go. So it's finished running. So if I navigate to my folder, um, I'll see a bunch of different files here. I've got the Hessian file now, which I didn't have previously. So if I open up the output file, here it is. Then I uh, make that a little bit smaller. If I go to frequencies, um, here are my vibrational frequencies. You'll see I have uh, a number of vibrational frequencies. I have nine in total. Um, so the first six are just um, because of the Hessian matrix calculation. So usually when you have a molecule, you'll have three N minus six uh, vibrations. So in the Hessian calculation, it's three N by three N. So it creates um, some other frequencies which do not exist like that minus six. Um, so this is just the minus six. So these are meaningless to our calculation. And then, um, 
they're just there. You just sort of ignore them. Um, then the last one, six, seven, eight. So we have the bending mode, we have the uh, symmetric, and we have the asymmetric stretches. So uh, if I open up ChemCraft, then I'll be able to just visualize those. So I'm still on a trial version. Um, if I've got no other choice, I'll probably eventually just have to get a, a license. Um, so if I open up the H2O to Freak, then uh, this is okay. So it's telling me that I can't visualize the molecular orbitals very well because I um, didn't include that information in the input file. But I knew I was doing that, so that's okay. Um, so uh, as normal, we have the geometry optimization. So we have an optimized geometry here for our H2O molecule, our water molecule. And then we've got the various frequencies here, which do not exist. And then frequency seven, eight, nine, those are the ones that are available in the actual water molecule. So seven is the bending mode. Um, then we have the symmetric stretch and then we have the asymmetric stretch. So that's great. Now these numbers are for the gas phase calculation using uh, a simple basis set and the Hartree-Fock calculation. So um, they're not terribly accurate. If we look up, for example, um, some literature values, we see that the bend is around about 1,654 wave numbers, the asymmetric stretch around about 3,500 wave numbers and the symmetric stretch around about 3,300. So all of our numbers are a lot higher than that. Now that's not totally um, unexpected since most of, uh, I think Orca uh, uses uh, harmonic calculations for these, for the, the bonding, uh, the bonds. So that's immediately a difference between reality because in reality bonds are anharmonic. Then uh, after that, we also have a problem where our method is just a hartree fock method, which is quite a simple method in terms of uh, these sorts of calculations. And then we also have a rather small basis set. So one of the ways that we can improve that is by um, just changing our method. So if I change the method to like, for example, a DFT method, and I was to improve the basis set a little bit, then, um, I should improve the calculation. So let's have a look at what might happen if I do that. So if I go back to Orca input library, uh, go under DFT calculations, I could just basically pick a, a rather common one. So for example, if I pick the um, B3 lip, uh, which is a very common uh, based on the BP uh, logarithm. So I'll just use this and then paste this in instead of the RHF put that in there, then remove the other call of the basis set here. And then I'll save this as uh, H2O freak uh, underscore uh, B3 lip, not BT lip, B3 lip. Okay, so uh, then let's run this calculation and let's see what we can um, find out. So go back to here. So I'm back in my run directory. There you go, I check it. So I have in fact got the input file here for the DFT. So let's hope, hopefully that will work. Um, so uh, we lip, okay. And then I'll just send that output to H2O. Hopefully this will work. And then I'll be able to show you how changing the method and improving the basis set a little bit um, can improve that. Now, I haven't really like spent a lot of time there looking at what method might be best for my vibrational calculation. Uh, I really just wanted to show quickly how you could grab a DFT method from the input library and then use that in your calculation. I'll make another video on sort of the do's and don'ts of DFT calculations. Um, which methods might work best for your particular system. So anyway, so there, that seems to have completed successfully. So if I um, show this, then I'll just um, put them side by side so that um, we can uh, view that. So where is my B3 lip? Oh, well, this, first of all, let's look at it in um, ChemCraft. So if I open uh, the B3 lip out, Okay, so there we go. So you can already see the calculation uh, vibrations are lower than they were before. Um, you can see it's below 4,000 now, so that's good. Uh, 
and the frequency orders are still the same. So it's band, then asymmetric, then asymmetric. Okay, so that's good. Um, so let's open the output file then in our text editor. Um, so where is it, where is it, where is it? Uh, okay, so let's just check to make sure that the, uh, yeah, so John, the optimization is converged. So I've got a good convergence. Then let's look under frequencies. Okay, so if we can compare these, uh, we can see obviously the first six um, are going to be uh, those which come from the Hessian matrix. So you can see already that the vibrations are lower um, by just changing that method, improving the basis set a little bit. Um, we have improved the, I guess, the match of, or the amount of error between the calculated frequencies and the experimental. Um, let's see if I can show uh, that one, this one. Okay, so where is that? Okay. So here they are in the heart refoc, here they are in the B3 lip, and here is what they, they are in the um, liquid water. So obviously there's a few differences because this is liquid water and not gas phase, whereas we're calculating in the gas phase, but these are sort of the values that we want to get closest to um, if we were doing liquid water. Um, so hopefully this was useful to you. Hopefully it showed you um, how to do a frequency calculation in Orca. Um, also some basic things that you could do to try and improve the quality of your frequency output. Um, if you have any questions, please just leave it down in the comments below. Um, I'll try and help you out if possible. And thanks for watching. Please stick around for future tutorial videos on Orca and just general uh, chemistry uh, tutorial videos. Thank you. Bye-bye.